So we are live. We'll be doing Hitman 3 story. Going to be doing the first mission. Of course. Live with Hitman. All right. And we are live with Hitman. All right. So we're live. All right. Let's see how we're going to go about this. What I'm gonna try to do, I'm gonna try to uh, get somebody uniform to get access to these guys. All right, so they're up there. Get his outfit. I'm assuming I'll have access to the maintenance Good quarters. To you, sir. So, what I'll do, I'll flood, I'll flood this sink. So she didn't hear it. Turn that off. Turn this off. So nobody don't bring the ass in here. 47. I would like to address the Providence partners directly. I want them to know why this is happening. Oh, he don't have a key card. And I have an idea, but it oh, requires you finding a map terminal. Oh, yes, you do. All right, found a map terminal. Listen, I want to talk to the partners directly. Make them understand why all of this is happening. And that terminal gives me an idea. There's a server room near the Sheikh's personal reception. If you can gain access to it, we might be able to recover useful intel from it. We'll have to work together to hack the system, but it's our best shot. All right, who's this guy? The Mighty Fall? How the Mighty Fall? Listen, all right. Look, it's just a precaution. I've been personally invited by the Royal Highness Omar al-Ghazali. I should have clearance. The name is Zayna Kazi. Sir, I understand. You can't enter without being searched. It's standard procedure. This is ridiculous. 
ridiculous. Well, that's how it is. Think about it and come back if you want. I'll be waiting upstairs in the reception. Understood. Twist. Alright. So he doesn't want to get searched. Well. It was a big waste of time. I wonder if I can go up there because I gotta. Sarah's off limits. Off you off go, limits. Waiter. I'm a waiter. There's a keypad lock on the doors to the staff area. One moment. 4706. There's quite a bit of security here. One moment. You ready for some more fresh air, 47? is also out there looking but this is awful i mean i'm in my boxers and you are a woman it's just so embarrassing oh it's nothing i haven't seen oh. but you don't understand i'm military we military men are used to punctuality yes you men in the army with your papers super punctual i get it I think I can open that window remotely. Scan the lock with your camera and I'll have a try. Actually, I want to go back into the locker room and open up one of these locks in here. See what I can get in there. Oh, I can't use that to open it? Okay. Close this door. Alright. Camera. Select. Use. Oh, 
I could technically. Alright. Let's close these doors. And we are on our way up. reaching out to his worldwide network of lawyers and financial contacts, attempting to restore the lost power base of the Providence partners. If Ingram and Stuyvesant were asked to a meeting, thinking they'll be told of new developments, I suspect they'd jump at the chance. There's a lounge area at the top of the building. It can be sealed off for private conversations. If we lure the targets there, they'll be trapped. in this hallway. So I should be able to get by this guy now. This is the server room. Hmm. A calendar function. We can use this to summon the partners to a fake meeting, 47. All right, I'm no hacker like Olivia, but I think you need to pull one of the racks here to gain access to the terminal. Security is on its way. Hide, 47. No. I thought I was actually hiding. Thank you. 
In the server room so they're gonna come from over here I'm gonna need to hide like right here so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna pull that one hmm. a calendar function we can use this to summon the partners to a fake meeting 47 all right I'm no hacker like Olivia but I think you need to pull one of the racks here to gain access to the terminal Silent alarm has been checked. Security is on its way. Hide 47. Sorry about that, 47. Let's try again, shall we? Uh, I think I've got it. We'll need a key card to gain access. Someone in maintenance should have one we can borrow for a spell. All right. Hey, it's me. I thought about what you said. Yeah, I changed my mind. It was an insane idea to start with. Exploding golf ball. I don't want blood on my hands. I've never taken things to such an extreme before. Uh, yeah. I promise I'll start nice. attending anger management. I know I have issues. Admit it. That's the first step, right? Anyway, I've locked the golf ball up in the maintenance scrub. Not that many of us do. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. That must have done something. Can you see anything different in the room? Yeah, this one. Good. We're in. Now all you need to do is access the terminal and use the calendar option to summon the Providence partners to a meeting. work. The meeting has been booked. The partners should be moving up here shortly. Huh. Looks like the lounge can be sealed off for private conversations. Building cameras are now disabled. Elevator doors are now open. Excellent. I see the partners moving. You should join their meeting. Time to end this, 47. Cameras are showing a lot of guards up here. They wouldn't suspect one of their own. What well, happened, buddy?
I'm coming for your ass, buddy. Yeah, just wanted to remind you about the uh, lockdown. That's right, 900 hours. And the key card to activate the alarm is going to be taken. Good today, sir. I think I'm a killing with her. I'll activate the panel controlling the room's security features. When you're ready, use it to start the show. Kill his ass with an apple. <laughs> Should I kill you with, sir? Should I kill you with an apple? Or should I just snap your neck? Okay, well done. I guess. Finally, Stuyvesant and Ingram are gone. Providence will soon be no more than a bad memory. 47. Thank you. I'll meet you at the rendezvous on the edge of town. Hey. That's how you do that there. That's your winning face. I'd hate to see you lose. 
We underestimated the constant. Yeah, he's a glorified desk clerk. He's not just after the money. He wants it all. We caught him once, we can do it again. And... Well, we're not the ones who let him escape. You still don't trust her. I don't like executive decision makers. Look, you don't have to follow her, you know? Soon, this will be over. Maybe it's time to think about the future. You have to face the possibility that there's no going back. If the ICA knows what you did, she'll make it right. She always does. We have a fix on Carlisle. Come on. We've got a plane to catch. I hope you like the rain, 47. Miss Burnwood. How did you... I have everyone's number. You really ought to know by now. You planned this. All of it. Don't be silly. I just played the hand I was dealt. We'll find you. You had me. Where'd that get you? We handed you an empire. It's for the best. The partners were complacent, set in their ways. But power is more than just security. Providence can be an agent of change. Surely you understand. Or you will. Soon enough. Death and the family. Fiber wire. Lethal injection. Fiber wire. Killer in the private room. See what we can smuggle in. Signature 47. Let's get her done. Let's get her done. Let's kill this old woman. Alexa. Thornbridge Manor. The Carlisle family's home for countless generations. The revenant Alexa Carlisle and her three adult children, younger brother Zachary, grandson and daughter-in-law, are all gathered to conduct Carlisle's sham funeral. Curiously, Carlisle summoned a famous London PI soon after arriving this morning, but his purpose at Thornbridge is yet unclear. 
Now, the target knows that you're coming, and her guard detail is top-notch. So Mr. Gray will secure their nearby field HQ and intercept all calls going in and out of the estate. Any appeal for backup is going to fall on very deaf ears. Good luck, Jed. Let's kill this old ass woman. That is Phineas Whitmer, the famous private investigator hired by Madame Carlyle this morning. I'm curious why he's here. Maybe you should do some detecting yourself, 47. I'm gonna kill his ass. He ain't gonna never make it. Kill him, take his disguise, but who's got getting people around watching? Put your dumb ass down. Sorry, you don't have the right clearance. Can't let you pass. And I'll just go through the window, dumbass. I'm up, I'm up to get the right clearance now. Drop this gun off my back. Mr. Whitmer, thank you for coming on such Please short notice. Back. 
A great tragedy has fallen upon us, and I need a quick resolution, handled with absolute discretion. Results and discretion are my speciality. Very well. I suppose you will want to start at the crime scene. In my experience, a thorough examination of a potential crime scene is half the job done. Good. Fernsby will take over from here. I am Mr. Fernsby, the butler. Madam Carlyle has asked me to assist you in any way possible. Mr. Whitmer, I understand that you've traveled from London. Would you care for some refreshments? Or do you prefer to go straight to Mr. Zachary's sleeping quarters? I prefer to get started. As you wish. If you'll follow me, sir. Hey, how you doing? I feel obliged to point out that current affairs surrounding Madame Carlyle are of a delicate nature. You may be familiar with the recent announcement of her death. You will probably learn that a staged funeral is scheduled to take place tomorrow. Madame's children were not informed until this morning that their mother was in fact not dead at all. So please bear with them if they seem affected by the rather unusual situation. I trust I do not need to remind you that there will be consequences if word gets out that Madame Carlyle is still alive. I'll consider her dead when I leave. Before you inspect the crime scene, I will tell you this. The case concerns the death of Mr. Zachary, Madame Carlyle's younger brother. He was found dead in his bed this morning. The door was locked from the inside, and a suicide letter was found in his room. However, Madame Carlyle suspects foul play and will not accept that he took his own life. I've prepared some information for you, so please do come and see me when you've finished your investigation of the crime scene. This is Mr. Zachary's room, to my right. A locked room murder mystery, 47. I trust you'll get to the bottom of this. Of course I will. Zachary's suicide note. Also, a sample of handwriting. It could be relevant to compare to other samples to establish its authenticity. Zachary was shopping for New Wellingtons last night. Not exactly what you would expect from someone suicidal. A hidden door. It's a secret passage. This could explain how the door was locked from the inside. Hmm. A photocopy of the floor plans. Somebody's been researching the secret ins and outs of Thornbridge Manor. I'm sure there's more to find in Zachary's room. I can find in Zachary's room. Why don't you use your camera to scan the dead body, 47?
throat markings indicate a rare, short-lived plant poison killed him. Spread shows time of death at around 10 o'clock last night. You do know your poisons, 47. I believe you've done a thorough search of the crime scene, 47. Maybe it's time to see the butler. I'm curious about the information he's prepared for you. Where the hell the butler's at? Downstairs, okay. Mr. Fernsby, I'm done with the crime scene. Did you establish a time of death? Zachary died around 10 o'clock last night. Well, that means the staff were off duty. And Madame Carlyle and her security didn't arrive until this morning. That leaves Madame's family and myself as the only persons here when he died. And before you ask, no, I do not have an alibi. I was alone in my office at the time of death. Here is the material that I prepared for you. It's a list of the possible suspects and their quarters. Hopefully that will help you keep track of your findings. Please come and see me when you've solved the case, and I will take you to Madame Carlyle. Mr. Fernsby? Mr. Whitmire, you have enough evidence to present your case for Madame Carlyle? No, not yet. Come and see me when you do. So how does one solve a murder mystery, 47? Motive means an opportunity, I believe. May I suggest you ask the suspects for alibis? Or perhaps do you prefer searching the manor for clues first? Let's ask the suspects. The staff. Such a gentleman. He gave me his coat and all. Rosie... You need to forget about Patrick. No good's gonna come of it. Stick to your own kind. You mean like Chris? He treated me like shit. All he wanted to do was play stupid video games. Never any romance. I deserve romance. Stick to your own kind. Boy. Heard that before. Professor Edward Carlyle, can you tell me your whereabouts for last night? Oh, yes. This dreadful business with Zachary. I stay at the local inn. You see, I prefer not to spend the night here at Thornbridge Manor. My brother Gregory came along for a nightcap. He never admit it, but I think he understands that I find this whole thing upsetting. And we wanted to provide some comfort. I believe we went to the stag's head around half past eight. If that's all, I have a speech to write. Can you tell me about Zachary's behavior last night? I certainly didn't expect him to commit suicide. Sure, he was upset by a mother's supposed death. We were. But he seemed more engaged than usual. You should ask Rebecca, they had a long talk. Did you know that he hadn't left Thornbridge Manor in nearly 50 years? His plants, mother, and staff were all the company he had. Anything else I can do to help? 
Did you notice anything else out of the ordinary? You mean apart from the fact that we came here to bury our mother and she shows up alive and kicking? Zachary found dead in his bed this morning? Or perhaps that the planned funeral is still taking place and I have to do the eulogy? And my mother will surely have a strong opinion on it afterwards. to play funeral and then show up like nothing's the least bit strange. Well, don't get your knickers all twisted. I'm telling you, she's not fit to be in here. Would you mind taking a few steps away from me, please? Gregory Carlyle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Oh, you're wondering about my alibi, Mr. Detective. Well, um, I left Thornbridge around half eight for a pint with Edward. I wish I hadn't. <laughs> quiz night at the inn. On the other hand, staying here with Zachary, my obnoxious sister, and the wife sporting another one of her headaches would have been a fate worse than death. <laughs> uh, the, the short of it, uh, Zachary was very much alive when we left. I stayed for the last shout and I was back here just before midnight. Is that all? Tell me about Zachary. Zach? Huh. Such a sad old sod. A bit heavy on the bottle. But who could blame him? The only company he had was his rare plants and mother, who travels more than she stays here. Honestly, I can't say which is the bigger bore. He's better off dead. Anything else you want to pry from my intricate intellect? Anything else you'd like to tell me? Nothing, really. I'm just enjoying the show. Our perfect mother obviously fucked up, didn't she? Faking her own death. You know, she's explained nothing to us. I think she's scared to own up to her own mistake. I'm gonna ask your ass, what do you know? Oh, I can't access bro or nothing? Yesterday evening. We don't really see much of each other, my brothers and I. I suppose it takes our mother's funeral to bring us together, and even then, it's not like we sit on each other's laps. Now, let's see. Patrick, Gregory's son, disappeared straight after dinner. You know, I think he might be in some sort of trouble. Edward wanted to go as well, but Gregory convinced him to stay for a few drinks before they went off for a pint at the local at a quarter to nine. I swear Gregory enjoys Edward's discomfort over staying here. I had a conference call with my New York office at nine, so I spent three hours on my laptop in my room and went straight to bed afterwards. I don't know about Emma. She did act a bit strange. You know, I bet she was making lists for changes needing to be done once she gets her hands on Thornbridge Manor. Quite the shock she had when Mother arrived during breakfast. Is there anything else you want to ask me? Tell me about Zachary. Did he act strange last night? You know, now you mention it, he was a lot more chatty than usual. He wanted to know about my connections in the publishing business. Apparently, a friend of his is writing a book. Which strikes me as very peculiar. I didn't think he had any friends. Is that everything, Mr. Whitmer? I do have a lot to see to. Mm. Anything else you feel like mentioning? I may be wrong, but I saw Mr. Fernsby, the butler, leave Zachary's room early this afternoon. And he seemed a bit startled when he saw me in the hallway. It's probably nothing. Oh, and one more thing. Please be kind to Edward. He can only take so much. All right. You sound like you're all lying.
Okay. So upon my investigation, you guys got a really shitty family. And uh I wasn't able to ask this broad anything. Emmer Carlisle. Here we can go. Can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Surely I'm not a suspect. I need to account for everyone. Well, I spent the evening with my family, but I got an awful migraine and had to take to bed. Everyone can attest to that. I believe I went up when the boys sat down for a drink around eight o'clock. Is that all? No, it's not. How did you feel about Zachary? I might as well be honest. His presence was always awkward. How do you have a meaningful conversation with a man who only cares about plants? In my opinion, Alexa bears some responsibility for how this ended. She supported his self-limiting behavior by letting him live here. Anything else you want to know? Have you noticed anything else out of the ordinary? Nothing special comes to mind. Except, perhaps, I did get a feeling that Zachary was depressed, not just sad. I suppose he realized that he had no one with Alexa gone. Even Alexa must feel the pangs of guilt over that one, letting him believe she was dead. Then again, guilt isn't her strong suit. Lying in her. That weird detective than you need to. I was just having a laugh, dear. I must admit, she's pretty good. What if he believes we had something to do with Zachary's death? Oh, please. Greetings, sir. All right. I heard enough. The butler did it. Mr. Fernsby? Mr. Whitmer, you have enough evidence to present your case for Madame Carlyle? No, I do. not yet. Come and see me when you do. Oh, come here, buddy. Patrick Carlyle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? It's that sneaky butler, isn't it? He ratted me out. Elaine, give us some privacy, would you? Don't tell mother, okay? She's really tense these days, and the last thing I need is more hassle. I took that pretty blonde, um, Rosie, uh, for an evening stroll. I, I mean, I mean, how the fuck am I expected to cope for an entire weekend in this shit hole? I'm bored out of my mind. So, <laughs> is that it? No, nah, that's not it, what buddy. What do you think of Zachary? Oh, creepy as hell. No ambition. Imagine deciding to live in a museum. You know, father says Zachary and Alexei used to be two of a kind. He had a great future ahead of him. Then suddenly, he just gave up everything. What an idiot. Thank God daddy chose looks and brains over pedigree when he married mummy. I don't have to worry about the inbreeding so customary in these circles. If that's all I think I'll... Did you see anything suspicious last night? No. I reckon Zachary topped himself. I know I would have. Or perhaps Mr. Fernsby. I don't like him. He could have done it. Told you. See, look where his ass is at. Right behind me. Mr. Fernsby? Mr. Whitmer, you have enough evidence to present your case for Madame Carlyle? No, not yet. Come and see me when you do. I ain't coming to see shit. Nah, I think I investigated. Talking to Madame Carlyle's door. Yes. She's insistent that one. She kept asking all kinds of questions. Who had the other one? Why I gave it to her? That sort of thing. You did make sure she didn't see you give the other one to the butler. Oh, of course. Hmm. Give the other one to the butler, huh? Is that right? What did he give to you? Hmm? Mr. Patrick. Mr. Fernsby. Mr. Whitmer. You have enough evidence to present your case for Madame Carlyle? No, not yet. Come and see me when you do. Hmm. Mr. Patrick. The butler suspect. All right. I have to brisk walk in the garden. Do you go? 
I said speed up time, not my passing. Now just go away. What do you think, sir? I'll come back later. How very kind of you, dear Mrs. Mosby. I hope so. Time for me to kill this old ass lady. Looking good today, sir. Wait till she comes down. Then I'm gonna go up. Madam Carlyle. Mr. Whitmer, you found proof of what happened to my brother? No, not yet. Go and see Fernsby when you do. Okay. Sorry, sir. You don't appear on my list, so you need to go. Okay. She holds the other one. I want her to have the file on Arthur Edwards if I die. We're not fearful she'll be in trouble if she knows. She will start digging when she realizes things don't add up. Inevitably getting her in trouble. I'd rather she knew who she's up against. She's clever and resourceful. Who knows, maybe she'll be able to hit him where it hurts. But I don't want her to get involved prematurely. Hopefully, she'll never have to get involved at all. Not all sneaky. For centuries, the Carlisles have fought to prosper all of us alone. If we could only unite across time, we could crush them all. All right. How are you today, sir? What I'm going to need is that uniform. Oh, man, I can't get it now. Oh, Zachary. At least you never got to learn that the horrible thing we did was for nothing. To protect the Carlyle legacy, what bollock. <laughs> I doubt our big brother could have botched it up any worse than I have, even if he tried. don't have a clue, do you? I'm talking about that weasel Arthur Edwards. Can we get back what he stole from me? So far, it looks like we can't. All the transfers of funds and privileges I've been through have been bulletproof. He intercepted... This whole mess. I, uh, I don't know what to say. I'm sorry. Don't be a messenger, Alexa. Please, continue your efforts. All right, walk your ass out. Is my shift over already? Yes, yes, I'll take over that. from here. It's all gone. Ron and I haven't been briefed about shit. What the fuck do I say to Carlisle? I feel completely blindsided here. I have no idea what's going on. It's it's all gone. No, she's calm as ice. It's just not natural. 
Nobody's that calm. It's gonna end in murder, I'm telling you. This all confirms that Arthur Edwards stole everything from Madame Carlyle. Perhaps you should let her know how bad it is, 47. Mm-hmm. You got you for all these loot. This is Rebecca's room. Hidden compartments. Look at this shit. I can see from the log that Rebecca was in a conference call from 9 p.m. to midnight last night. Hmm, okay. Looking good today, sir. Yeah, I know, buddy. All right. That door leads to Emma and Gregory's room. What do we have here? Now this is interesting, 47. A letter from Emma's mother stating that Emma is the illegitimate child of Alexa's late older brother, Montgomery. And listen to this. She claims to have witnessed Alexa and Zachary murder him. The plot thickens. A keychain pendant for the greenhouse. What's that doing in Emma and Gregory's room, I wonder? And why is the key missing? Hmm. I'm on my Dick Tracy shit right now. What you got over here? A letter opener. Alright, alright. And I can just basically hide in here if I need to.
I've received more information about your situation. Mr. Ford, we can't talk here. Go back to your office. I will be there shortly. Hello, Mr. Bravuomo. What's the verdict, Mr. Ford? Undoubtedly, some of my assets must be safe. No. Everything is gone. Thornbridge Manor, surely? That, too. But that's not possible. I'll kill him, I swear, if it's the last thing I do. Thank you, Mr. Ford. That will be all. Somebody should document this historic Greetings, moment. Greetings, sir. Mother apologizing for a major cock-up. Both firsts, I believe. In my own time, Gregory. I'll wait till everybody is here. Mother's apologizing? started. I want to keep this short. I know you have a lot of questions. Some I will answer now. The rest will have to wait. First, Zachary's sudden death is a great tragedy, but also a great inconvenience, as it happened just now. I'm dealing with the situation in a discreet and efficient way, and I expect your cooperation in all related matters. Secondly, the arranged funeral event tomorrow will take place as planned. No one can know that I am still alive. I expect you all to act your part. Last, as you all know, I have a lot on my plate and need to focus on sorting everything out, so please do not disturb me with your petty concerns. You are all adults, and as part of the elite, you will eventually have to deal with difficult situations like this. It comes late for most of you, but this is a chance for you to show what you are made of. That will be all. Damn. She cold like a motherfucker. What an exit. Both bags
Mother, I want to know what is going on. Not now, Rebecca. I thought I made that clear. Yes, now. Something's really wrong. I started digging, and I can see that a lot of our mandates are void. Financial decisions revoked and a freeze on... Rebecca. And then you give me that token for the vault in London. But only one of two. You need to explain. The token for the bank vault is just a contingency measure. I doubt you'll need it. Christ, Mother, that's exactly what I mean. Could you be more cryptic? I am working very hard to figure everything out. I need you to back off and trust that I'm in control. I have contingency plans and will make sure that you get information, useful, factual information when I have it. But for now, I need time to focus. <laughs> Business as usual, then. You are cold, Mother. And alone. By choice. Damn. Don Yates, Alexa Carlyle here. You need to explain yourself. I demand that you return my call ASAP. Sending a junior attorney is gross negligence of your responsibilities and will have consequences for your company and you personally as well. I will make sure of that. Mark my words. I'm just loving the way this is all playing out. Like, this story is fucking great. <laughs> um, so I'm just waiting till she bring her ass upstairs to her secret room. And then I'll murder her up there. And then I'll be able to get the, uh, the case files. No need to panic. Ah, my perfect mother. Ah, who would have thought? You fucked up, didn't you? Staging your own death? A major, a grandiose cock-up, I'd say. Be quiet, Gregory. It shows you're only human, after all. I never would have guessed. That's Madame Carlyle taken care of. Time to get the file on Arthur Edwards. All right. Took care of this old lady. Now we got to get the file. Pick up the newspaper. No. We got to make our way upstairs. She has like a secret room that she used to go to all the time. My man still trying to kick his game. Hello, son. What's that stairway? 
Was it over here? No, it's not up here. Oh, it's up here. Here we go. This is the stairway. How are you? Edward's ex Madam Carlyle certainly doesn't I don't know what's so. going on at your house. Why else she have asked a detective to come here? He seems to believe that Alexa no, has come back not that I dead, said, and that he has to write the eulogy for some make-believe funeral event. I still have the restraining order on him, so whoever gets this message now that Alexa is dead better get him under control. Otherwise, I see no other way than to get the police involved. All right. I gotta get into that room right there on the left. Come on, go flirt with him. Shit. Bingo. Maybe I was a bit too presumptuous there.
that thing is ready to get eight. Put your ass in here. Alright. This is all I wanted to do. Peculiar icons above the safe. I wonder if they might be some sort of a code. Maybe have a look around the office, 47. It is a code. Um... I think it's one nine seven five. No. Mission complete. Damn. Well done, 47. I got to get the hell out of here now. <laughs> this is a good mission, though. I really, I really enjoyed the mission. Even though it was a longer mission than the other missions, only reason I took the long way with this mission is because I wanted to see the story through. Um, through this particular playstyle, because the last playstyle I played it through, I just went in, killed her, snapped her neck, and I didn't um, try to investigate who actually did anything. So this time I actually was able to uh, investigate who actually was the murderer. I gotta find a way to get out of here.
back up. I'm trying to get it out. Yeah, keep it real. my other option. Woo! If I didn't find that window... I'm not trying to let my black ass get out of here alive. Show yourself. It's up to you whether this ends good or bad. We've got trouble. Some freak is acting up. Any description of possible suspects? Okay, okay. <laughs> I passed it, shit. <laughs> I know I lost a lot of freaking points, like, at the end. But, uh, I enjoyed the playstyle on this one, though, because uh, at least I was able to be the detective and experience the playthrough through a different, different perspective. Yeah, I didn't know it took me 58 minutes to do this mission. But that was only because I was listening to the dialogue. That was the only reason why. Alright guys, I'll catch you in the next broadcast.